Okay, it's almost time to move on, but there's one more thing I want to do, and I realized that I probably should have done it before. So what I can do now is create a filled surface on the bottom of this product. So we could just go filled surface and then just click these two edges. And because they make one big closed shape, when I click OK, I end up with a surface on the bottom. That's all well and good. But now I have to join it, knit it, back to this original surface. And that means now I have an extra knit. I have a knit here and then another knit there. That's just wasted extra features. And I prefer to keep this tree as short and as clean as possible because otherwise, with a complex model, it's going to get confusing really quickly. So let's go ahead and take a step back in time before our surface knit. Now we can do a filled surface with that edge and that edge, just like before, same exact thing. Except now, when we go forward in time, I can tell my surface knit, I can edit that knit and tell it to also join in the bottom. Now we just have one surface knit that has, you know, this whole closed shape. That'll be much better. Now eventually we're going to have a rounded edge on the bottom of this, but because that rounded edge doesn't affect any of the other pieces of geometry on our product, we're not going to add it to this file. And I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Let's go File, Save As. I'm just going to save this as masterform.solidpart. This is going to serve as the form for the rest of our model. This will not become the actual part. We're just going to use this surface. In this document, we don't have to go any further than this. So let's go and create a new file now. And this time, we're going to create an assembly. Click OK. And it's going to ask us if we want to add our open assembly document, our master form document. I'll select it. And then just click this little green checkbox here, and it'll automatically put this uh, item out in space for us at the origin. Now, um, I have an assembly, and under that assembly, I have a part. Now, this part is just our master form. It's not an actual part. It's just a surface body. So let's go ahead and create a new part. I'm going to say Insert Component New Part. And this part, and now to select this uh, part the way it is, for some reason they make you click in the viewport, just left click in the viewport, and now we have a new part. So I'm going to click on this uh, part here and rename it. We'll call it Glass Carafe. And um, now it has it in brackets. You can see the name is in uh, square brackets. And that means that this part is actually not saved outside of the assembly. It's actually, right now, a part of the assembly document. We don't like that. We want to save it external to the file. So let's right-click this and say Save Part in External File. It's going to ask us where we want to save it. And by default, it's going to save it, well, in the same place we just were, which is good. Click OK, and it'll save it as Glass Carafe. Now the square brackets are gone, meaning this file is external to our assembly. We also haven't saved our assembly yet, so let's go ahead and save our assembly. And we'll just call this our uh, French press top level. So now I have two parts in this assembly, one blank part that has nothing in it, and one master form. I'm going to right click on this blank part and go up here to open part. So now the list looks just like before, except we're in a glass carafe part with nothing in it. I'm going to go insert part. Now this might be kind of a weird concept, but um, we're really not actually inserting uh, a part like into an assembly. We're using this part, this master form part that I'm going to select, just for the surface bodies that are in it. So I'm going to say import solid and surface bodies and click the checkbox. And there we go. Now we have our surface body in here. And in fact, all we really need in this case is the surface body. So let's go edit feature and only import surface bodies. So now you can see we've imported our master form and we have that surface that we created. And to create the rest of the features on that surface, first I just want to add the round on the bottom. So we'll use our fillet tool up here in the top. And I'm going to choose a face fillet. Pretty nice tool. I'll choose this uh, top, this front face to be uh, one side. Click on the next box and click the bottom face. And you can see that these arrows are pointing out right now. And for the fillet to work, they need to be pointing in. And that's what these two buttons do right here. I can flip them both. Now we're pointing in. Now I want this to be about a one inch uh, fillet, which is what it is. And I'm going to make it curvature continuous. 
So check the box for curvature continuous, and then down at the bottom, there's also constant width. I'm going to check that as well. And uh, it's hard, again, it's hard to explain what that does, but um, it's going to make things a little bit better in this, uh, well, in most cases, actually. I try to use that if I can. So um, there we have it. There's our basic surface, and all we have to do is make it thick. So let's go to our features, go thicken. We can choose this whole surface body here. I'm going to make it 2.5 millimeters thick. And there we have it. It's our basic carafe. And to round the top off, I'm going to do a different kind of fillet. Let's go fillet. And this time, instead of face fillet, let's do full round fillet. I'll choose the outer surface for the blue box, choose the top surface for the purple box, and the inner surface for the pink box. And that's just going to do a full round between those three surfaces and propagate that across all tangent edges, all well, tangent faces, I guess, technically. And there we have it. Here is our glass carafe. And if I want to, uh, well, actually, I'm just going to leave this the way it is. Let's uh, close this document, hit yes for save. It's going to take us back to our French press top level assembly. Now, this looks roughly the same. Uh, that's because our master form is showing. Let's, r let's click on it, and then up here, there is a hide components button. It's got little glasses next to a component icon. And there we go. Now we can see the glass carafe that we created is nicely in place in our assembly, right where we want it. And if we want to, we can right-click on it and click on Appearance. And let's change the appearance for the assembly uh, item. So we can change its color to, say, this aqua blue. And if we want to, we can even drag up its opacity so it's kind of a transparent looking thing. And there's our glass carafe in place, ready to rock. So um, basically the idea here is we have a master form that we can edit to make changes to the main overall portions of our model, especially the parts that have to interact with one another. There will be some uh, features that aren't important to the other features, however, like the radius on the bottom of this it makes no difference to the handle or to the lid or anything else. So there's no point in adding complexity to this model just to uh, add that surface in our master form. It's better to go back to our assembly, go into the actual final part, and add the fillet there. That's just going to keep things clean and simple as we continue to work. So um, without further ado, I suppose we should just move on. So let's go back to our master form here, select all of these features, right click, and I'm going to say add to new folder, and we'll call this our carafe outer. I'm going to select these two features, add them to a folder, call it datums. It's just going to keep this nice and clean and tidy for us. I'll close this, save it, or, and then um, up here at the top, uh, of, with the top level assembly, I can click on the file menu and just say save all. And that's just a handy way of saving everything all at once. Any parts we might have modified will get saved. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next thing.